good evening aspirants welcome back for uh, ancient india of wakatan so we have completed ancient indian history till indus valley civilization different dimensions of indus valley civilization transport arti crafts religion culture all these we have seen the raw materials which used in agriculture implements or industry all else how was the society how was the culture all those things we have seen so now starting with vedic civilization vedic literature is the most significant source of information about vedic civilization when you talk about vedic literature we also spoke about vedic literature when we spoke about ancient indian history sources vedas means knowledge vedas means knowledge these are source of knowledge but for us as history students uh, this is source of history source of our ancient history the vedic uh, scriptures vedas brahmanas aranyakas and upanishads these are the different literary works through which we understand the vedic civilization vedas what are vedas vedas means knowledge the word literally means veda means knowledge these are the earliest segment of vedic literature in vedic literature vedas are very important core part the vedic literature had been evolved in the course of many centuries and was handed down from generation to the generation from word of mouth as i said this is part of shruti right from one person to one person the communication is through oral communication right this is through the voice transfer only right normally vedas cannot be read will not be read but given by the master to the student as a shrota right vedas are collection of hymns prayers charms litanies and sacrificial formula so different vedas we have rigveda samveda yajurveda atharvana veda it is the oldest veda and collection of many hymns are there in this it is a collection of samaveda is collection of songs mostly taken from rigveda yajurveda is talking about yajnas or sacrificial formula atharvana veda is a collection of spells and charms so these are the four texts these are the different contents which are available in this text basically then you come to brahmanas brahmanas other set of literature which was available brahmanas brahmanas are prose texts unlike poetic it describes about the meaning of vedic hymns their applications and stories of their origins and details besides this it also details about rituals and philosophies brahmana talks about brahmam okay the philosophy okay the philosophy origin we will trace to the roots and origins of this particular documents uh, vedas aranyakas and upanishad aranyaka and upanishad exemplify philosophical meditations of the hermits and ascetics on soul god world etc so there are many philosophical traditions there were many gurus rishi maharshi like uh, vasistha vishramitra vishwamitra parshurama so we talk about the philosophies and the philosophies in around in, in and around the objects which are soul god or world these are partly included in brahmanas are attached and partly exist in a separate works they the brahmanas the aranyakas and the upanishad are attached to one or the other of the four vedas directly indirectly they are attached to one or the other vedas so you can see in telugu we call it as vyakyanam right on different texts the brahmanas aranyakas and upanishads are attached to one or the other of four vedas composition of hymns are credited to hindu rishis monks of divine origin so there are many when you speak you have vashishta you have vishwamitra you have uh, you have uh, many sages saptarishi concept you you must have heard about saptarishi concept even in this particular budget we spoke about saptarishi 
concept. So, that is important. The Vedas are called Apurusheya, which means Apurusheya means not the creations of man. These are not created by human beings. These are not created by human beings. And Nitya, so existing in eternity, these are going to be useful for any time and space. These are going to be useful for any time and space domains. While the Rishis are known as inspired seers who received the mantras from the supreme deity. So, this was said that Vedas were received by those Rishis who were living in hermits in the forest and uh, they received it from the supreme deities. They did tapas, right? From tapas, they have attained these Vedas for the human time. So, age of Rig Veda. So, if you try to understand the history, if you see the age of Rig Veda, the origin of the earth goes back to 4.6 billion years. We spoke in the first class. Origin of humans themselves is 4.2 million years. And I said the human being now, which are, who are homo sapiens, this kind of human being evolved 50,000 years ago. Before that, homo needs and homo erectus were there. That we spoke. Max Muller gave arbitrarily date of composition of Rigveda to around 1200 to 1000 BC. So, 1200 to 1000 BC. Actually, when we are going back in time, 1000 BC to 1200 BC. W.D. Whitney negated and criticized Muller for using totally arbitrary, unscientific, unacademic method of assigning dates. On the analogy of the language of Avesta, some scholars opined that data of Rigveda would be around 1000 BC. So, Vedic civilization normally we divide it into uh, early Vedic civilization, later Vedic civilization. In early Vedic civilization, we had only one Veda that is Rigveda, all other Vedas came later. Some of the Vedic gods, namely Indra, Varuna, Mitra, and uh, Nasatyas were mentioned in bogus koi of Asia Minor inscription. We speak about Asia Minor, I am talking about uh, geography, Asia Minor. In the inscription, bogus koi, it is mentioned about these names. So, we can understand their external contacts during Vedic civilization. Like Indus Valley civilization had contacts with Egypt and Mesopotamian civilization. Which proves that Rig Veda must have come into existence much before the date described by some of the foreign scholars. Bogus koi inscription records treaty between Hittite and Mitanni kings and the gods mentioned above these gods, Mindra, Varna, Mitra were cited as a witness to this treaty. Even today, exactly the same way, the oath is taken in the courts on an assumption of public office. Oaths are very important. If you read constitution, oaths are very important. Uh, even now, for every public office, oath is important. In the name of God, in the name of the constitution, likewise. Harman Jacobi held that Vedic civilization flourished between 4500 BC to 2500 BC and the Samhitas were composed in the later half of that particular period. Famous Sanskritist Winternitz felt that Rig Veda was probably composed in the third millennium BC. R.K. Mukherjee suggested that one of the modest computation we should go is 2500 BC as the Rig Veda. Pandey also favors a date 3000 BC or even earlier. So, imperialist scholars, national scholars, foreign accounts, everyone had a different opinion, they, there are criticisms and estimations about the date of Vedic civilization. <coughs> Angshuman, greeting sir, how can I get, please note my number, please message me, I do not understand this, please note my number, 89194654. 8191465819. So please message me, Angshuman, in that number. Yes, Alka, good evening. Yes, you are my student. I can recognize you. Rigvedic people called themselves Aryans. They had detailed knowledge of geographical area in which they lived. They called themselves as Aryans. Name and location and pattern of geographical features such as rivers, mountains mentioned in Rigveda the suggest the location of the region. So, unlike the proto-history where we spoke about Vedic civilization, this history has literature. 
In this literature, it is clearly mentioned about the rivers, about the mountains they had, the geographical locations where they lived. Nadisukta Him of Rigveda mentions 21 rivers which include the great Ganges to the east and the Kuba, Kabul river in the west. So these are the two rivers which you can see in different texts of Vedic literature. The pattern of rivers is given in a definite order from the east to west that is from Ganga in the east to the Kabul in the west. The rivers like Emuna, Saraswati, Saklej, Ravi, Jhelum, Indus are such situated between Ganga and Kabul. So Ganga, Kabul and the Ganges civilization, the Indus civilization, the Indus basin and the Ganges basin, Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati and the Indus basin. Mountains namely Himalayas and the Mujwant as mentioned in the Vedas are in the north. The ocean, Sagara, Samudra mentioned in connection with the rivers, Sindhu and the river Saraswati has been falling into the ocean. Ocean has also been mentioned in the context of foreign trade. So based on this, we can conclude about this particular civilization clearly. <coughs> the geography of Rigvedic period covers present day Western Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan, Gujarat and the whole of Pakistan and south of Afghanistan. So in the subcontinent, these are the different states in the country and the other parts of the world which is which this particular Vedic civilization is extended to. The battle of 10 kings very important. The battle of 10 kings mentioned in the Rig Veda gives the names of 10 kings who participated in the war against Sudas who was Bharata king of Trichu's family. It illustrates that the territory known as Vedic people was divided into a number of republics and monarchies. So the combination of monarchical type of uh, emperors and we have uh, state republics. So 10 kings, the battle of 10 kings is mentioned in Rig Veda. The battle was fought on the bank of Parushini. So if I talk about Parushini, I spoke about Harappa. Harappa is on the shores of Ravi. Parushini in Sanskrit is talking about Ravi river. And Sudhas emerged as victorious. In the battle of kings, Sudhas emerged as victorious. This is the war between uh, 10 kings, 10 small monarchies and republics which was mentioned in Rig Veda, right. So Bharatvarsha was the name used for the whole country. It was given by the most important people of the Rig Veda. So Veda suggests that name of the country is Bharatvarsha. So our Vedic uh, texts call India as Bharat and the international texts such as Greek or Italian or Chinese travelers suggest different names. But uh, what foreigners regularly called as India, we call ourselves India and we also call ourselves Bharat, Bharat Mata. The Rig Veda also gives the location of other people such as Purush in the region of Kurukshetra, the Tritsas east of Ravi, the Alinas, the Paktas and Bhalanas are the Sibis of the West Indus up to Kabul river and so on. All the names of the 10 kingdoms and the locations, geographical locations are clearly mentioned. They didn't have this particular uh, uh, GPS system where they can say altitude, latitude, longitude. So they are telling that towards the east of this particular, towards the west of this particular river, towards the east of this particular mountain, towards the west of this particular mountain. This is how they are identifying their kingdoms and the extent. So that is about geography. So when we talk about society, Vedic society, early Vedic society and later Vedic society. Occupation of individuals was the basis of classification of the society. Occupation was the basis. So it was divided into four Varnas, one Brahmanas who are teachers and priests, Kshatriyas, rulers and administrators, Vaishas, farmers, merchants and the bankers, Sudra, artisans and laborers. There was a complete freedom and mobility of adoption of profession. So this, this is, this caste system is not rigid. There is mobility. The son of Sudra can become Brahmana. The son of Brahmana can become Vaisha. So there is social mobility clearly then. Trades and occupations did not assume a hereditary character 
in the society. So, you can clearly understand I, as I said Rig Vedic period we can divide it into early Vedic period and later Vedic period. In early Vedic period although the society is divided on the basis of caste uh, there is mobility, but in the later Vedic period caste mobility is not there, caste became rigid and the caste was accorded based on the birth of that particular person. <coughs> if you have to see the features of this particular society, the family was the smallest unit of the society, right? It was primarily monogamous and patriarchal. One is monogamous, the second one is patriarchal. Even now, the strong patriarchal features are there in India because of that genetical memory. Child marriage was not in fashion. There was a freedom of choice in marriage. A widow could marry the younger brother of her deceased husband. Wife was partner of the husband in all religious and social ceremonies, which means that uh, she was given equi equal position in sacrifices and social and pu public uh, processions. The father's property was inherited by son. This is where we call it as patriarchy. The daughter could inherit it only if she was the only child, which means daughter also can inherit, but if she should be the only child. Right to property was known in movable things like cattle, horse, gold and ornament and also for immovable properties such as land, house. If you go to Stone Age, what assets you are talking about? When you came back to settled form of life, you are talking about house, domesticated animals, agriculture, grains, the coins which you minted, the seals you minted, the beads, all these are becoming the material wealth. So, people started creating that material wealth. <clears throat> so, Vedic education, how was the education then? The teacher was given the greatest respect. Unfortunately, nowadays it is not the case. The school was in the home of the teacher where he taught a particular sacred text. So, ashram, guru ashram. The texts were in first instance learned by peoples repeating the words taught by their teacher. As I said, this is through dictation. So, this is only through Shruti. The transfer of Vedas from one to other is only through Shruti. This is through dictation and repetition. The great importance was attached to the enunciation and pronunciation. It is not the words, it is not the spellings, it is enunciation and pronunciation which was given more importance. Oral learning was the method of training. So, as I said, Shruti, Smriti, Puranas, these are the important uh, part of Vedic education. Students were given, so students were given intense training and learning to memorize and preserve the huge mass of Vedic literature. That is what you see when you go to a temple, priest will keep repeating the hymns, right? So the next one is food and drinks of Vedic civilization food and drinks. The important part of the diet was milk and products like curd, butter, ghee which were derived from the domesticated animals. Grains were cooked with milk that is called shira pakamodhanam. In Telugu people call it as payasam, right? So, uh, this is important part in any festival. Chapati made of wheat or bread and barley is eaten mixed with ghee. People used to eat the meat of birds, wild animals like boar, antelopes and buffalo and fish. So, vegetarian, non-vegetarian, the you can say food technology we are talking about, food technology or maybe biotechnology of food especially. The meat of animals such as sheep, goat, buffalo, etc., which were sacrificed on ceremonial occasions were also eaten. So, they were sacrificed and further eaten, right? Jatka, normally we call it as Jatka meat. So, the way we call it as halal for uh, in Islam, Jatka, after uh, sacrificing the meat is called Jatka meat, will be eaten by those people who sacrificed. The cow was mentioned as Agnya, not to be killed. So, murdering a cow is punishable offense then. The Vedas prescribe a penalty of death or expulsion from the kingdom for those who kill or injure cows. So, 
गोरक्षक गो रक्षक वाई वी कॉलिंग इट एज गो रक्षक बिकॉज दिस इज द असेट नॉक कव इज बिकमिंग असेट इट इज बिकमिंग पार्ट ऑफ फैमिली देर इज इमोशनल पार्ट इन इट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सुरा एंड सोमा दीज आर आल्कोहलिक ड्रिंक्स विच आर अवेलेबल कंज्यूमड थ्रू देयर कंजम्पन हैड बीन कंडम्पटेड ऑल दो देयर कंजम्पन हैज बीन कंडम्ड द the vedic society had a two important alcoholic beverages one is sudha sura and the other one is soma these are the two important alcohol beverages they had <coughs> so coming to the economic life of vedas vedic period agriculture cattle rearing as i said agriculture settled form of life cattle rearing domestication of animals trade and commerce once you have the surplus trade and commerce are the major economic activity of rigvedic people people had domestic animals like cow sheep goats asses dogs and buffaloes oxen were used for plowing and drawing carts and horses for drawn chariots important one is chariots the importance of this vedic culture is iron came into usage people started from hills so you can see people started from hills let us consider here they used to live in caves people walked down and started living in and around rivers right they further came and cleared the forests in and around alluvium soils if you see this is stone age where people lived in mountains most of the time so pleistocene in pleistocene also most of the time people lived in caves so stone age paleolithic and uh, mesolithic neolithic age then people came down if seen chalcolithic age also we found traces there after chalcolithic indus valley civilization in and around indus saraswati civilization we spoke about then people came farther down so let us consider farther down to uttar pradesh and uh, uh, to bihar these regions where there were dense forests they have to clear these forests so kind of metals they started using gave an advantage for them for settled form of life initially what they used stones from stones they came to copper from copper they started using bronze from bronze they started using iron so chariots are normally given with iron chariots doors also had iron pivots bullock carts they used iron in agriculture technology also plows are made of iron iron used in war equipment iron is used to clear the forest when they started clearing the forests only they get to have this elephants elephants became part of their army also that's how things worked the grains were harvested with sickles as i said manure was used for high yield irrigation was also practiced intensely the water supply excess of rains and drought mentioned in damaging crops so even then in vedas we can see clearly that the farmer is dependent on the vagaries of weather in uh, this literature in this sanskrit literature in this vedic literature the grains collectively called yava or dhanya yava and dhanya some other occupations were like uh, pottery making weaving carpentry smith leather working etc initially copper was the only metal that was used generally and the term ayas had been used for this and the general term ayas had been used for this in the later period terms like lohit ayas and sham ayas were used for copper and iron initially when people called ayas they called copper as ayas then they called sham ayas as iron so we can say sham ayas lohit ayas means copper again in the later times so iron age we can call it as iron age this changed the course of history the use of this particular metal changed the course of history the trade and traders were also known in the rigvedic era the practice of exchange of goods which are barter economy so now the economy is based on market mechanism price mechanism demand and supply then we had barter economy what the trend it has been found that 10 cows were quoted as the price of an image of indra 
So 10 cows were quoted for the image of Indra. So understand the spiritual importance. Spiritual importance. The use of money can be traced in the mention of gift of 100 Nishikas. The coinage they call it as Nishka. Coinage we call it as Nishka. Money lending was also popular as I said Vaishas, right? So we can say Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Sudra. Vaishas are doing, Vaishas were doing this. It is mentioned that the 8th or 16th part, one being paid either as an interest or the part of principal. It is mentioned that one eighth or one sixteenth part of one being paid as an interest. So if you say now 24 percentage is 2 rupees interest, right, 1 rupee means 12 percentage. So 25 paisa means 6 percentage. So in and around 40 paisa is given 40 paisa, 80 paisa, these were the uh, not YD paisa, 1.5 paisa, 1, 1 rupee 50 paisa, likewise for the interest rates then. The C is mentioned in the context of trade and ocean is considered as a wealth uh, where they have uh, uh, brought out pearls, shells which they have used in uh, different ornaments and decorations. Politics of Vedic India as well as structured and organized. So let us see the political structures. Unlike Indus Valley civilization, we don't have uh, any clear uh, uh, understanding about that. We have a clear understanding about the political structures here. What we have initially is family, the smallest unit, Kula. The village, Grama. Above Grama, we have the clan, Vish. The people, Jana. The country is called Rashtra. Kula included all the people living in under the same roof which are Gruha and the person is called Kulapati normally. Kulapati, the elderly male person. The collection of several families consist Grama, village and the headman was known as Gramini. Kulapati, Gramini. The collection of several Gramas was called Vish and the head of this is called Vishpati. Several Vish constituted Jana and mentioned as Pancha Jana, Yadava Janaha and Bharata Janaha. It depends upon the population there. The aggregation of all Jana constitute Rashtra, the country. Right? That is where even now we say Rashtrapati. So then comes administration. Then comes administration. The hereditary kings were a popular form of government. So you can see that hereditary is there. Now it is republic. Then it was hereditary kings. The provisions of democratically elected kings by the assembly of the people of Jana was also known. As I said, we had monarchical governments and we also had republics. As I said, the war of 10 kings where Sudha emerged, Sudha emerged as the winner. In that I have explained about battle of 10 kings, right? The Rashtra was the small states ruled by Raja. Rashtra means small state. The bigger kingdoms were ruled by Samrat. That reflects that they enjoyed a position of greater authority and dignity. Raja administered justice with the assistance of Purohita. Religion is the source of, uh, source of ethics, source of law. The Raja offered Bali. Raja was offered Bali, which was voluntary gift or tribute for his services. Bali was offered by his own people and also from defeated people. Bali and Baga. Bali and Baga. Bali means voluntary gift and Baga means compulsory payment. These are the initial taxation model. Now you say you, talk, you have direct taxation, indirect taxation income tax, GST, all this likewise then the source of income from the king for the king is Bali and Baga. The crimes were strongly dealt with by administration. Major crimes were theft, burglary, robbery,
cattle lifting these are the as you see these are the assets grains were assets similarly domesticated animals were assets so these are the major crimes so apart from that in, in administration vedic administration the important officials were purohita as i said he is the chief priest minister and interpreter of religions for the king so that they can reach justice senani chief of army gramini head of village dutha envoy like hanuman went to lanka as a dutha and spy spy sabha and samiti were two important assemblies mentioned in rigveda these assemblies were forms of essential features of government like we have assembly parliament lok sabha raj sabha now sabha and samiti were there samiti was mainly dealt with the policy decisions and political business included common people common people were there the sabha was selected body of elderly people nobles are less political in character so you can see samiti sabha samiti is like lok sabha sabha can be compared to raj sabha but not in full comparison for your understanding sabha is uh, a house of experts less of political in nature whereas samiti was of uh, uh, people and uh, it is more of political nature and the categories of gods gods goddess demons the vedic gods were classified into three gods one is terrestrial the second one is aerial the third one is celestial prithvistana antarikshastana dyustana right prithvistana terrestrial gods prithvi agni soma brihaspati and rivers are considered as gods themselves aerial or intermediate antarikshastana there are few indra right apam napat rudra vayu vata prujanya apa these are the intermediate then celestial dyustana like dyas varuna mitra surya savitri pushan vishnu adityas ushas and the ashvinis so these are the different categories of gods we had indra and varuna are the supreme cosmic and moral rural stand out in the order preeminent above the rest so the ruler of the gods indra and varuna these are considered as very important these are considered as the supreme gods supreme cosmic gods then so you can see that god indra and god varuna this is god indra sitting in center right who is the ruler of gods and this is god varuna but later they lost the supreme god significance and uh, rudra vishnu brahma other gods emerged agni and soma were popular deities agni and soma were popular deities agni was valued as the messenger between the earth and heaven that is the reason why we do homa ejna when we do ejna we offer many food products many clothes sometimes sacrifices of animals because it is like offering to the heaven these are being transported to heaven gods are described as born yet they are import immortal so these are chiranjeevis these are chiranjeevis immortal in appearance they are humans though sometimes they are conceived as animals example dios as a bull and sun as a swift horse so symbolically symbolically in the sacrifice to the god ordinary food of men such as milk grain flesh etc were offered which becomes the food of gods so agni which is the transporter of uh, these materials will take the materials from the earthly world to this materialistic world to the spiritual world which is heaven the gods normally used to be kind but some of them also had unkind traits like rudra and maruta right unkind so sometimes uh, the gods are not all the time so kind to the people but also they get angry like rudra and maruta splendor strength knowledge possession and truth were common attributes of all the deities 
Gayatri mantra is recited daily by the pious Hindus even today, which was there in Rig Veda. The multiplicity of gods is due to the different uh, designations that they have given to the God. The ultimate unity of universe is asserted as a creation of one God to whom different design designations applied. So there is one God who created this world and there are different designations which were given to many gods. Mukkoti, 33 type of gods, 33 categories of gods. The creation is dreamed as an outcome of sacrifice made by the Virat Purusha or the evolution from non-being manifested in the form of water. It mentioned that Hiranya Garbha, Hiranya Garbha, so we call it as Hiranya Garbha, Hiranya means gold, womb. Garbha means womb. The great waters pervading the, like uh, pervading the universe and thus created the waves out of eternally pre-existing matter. The hymn devoted to Vishwakarma, the architect of this particular world, tells us that the waters contain the floating world egg from which Vishwakarma arises, the first born in the universe, the creator and the maker of the world. It is now confirmed by science that life was first developed under water. So scientifically, now initially in the evolution of this particular living organism, after the evolution of earth, here also I spoke 4.6 billion years ago, earth born, but only after 4.2 million years ago, human beings started their life. In between, there are many living organisms, like uh, we speak about aquatic, then uh, uh, aquatic to mammals, right? So we are talking about the evolution. The scientific evolution is also similar to the evolution which was prescribed here in the Sanskrit slokas. Even science says that aquatic life, then amphibians, then mammals likewise, the same way, then homo need, homo erectus, homo sapiens. So then Aryan invasion, the concept of Aryan invasion which was discarded, we spoke about Indus Valley civilization also, Aryan invasion, philosophy, Aryan invasion theories, but somehow we could not agree that Indus Valley civilization was destroyed by Aryan invasion because no such skeletal remains, mass skeletal remains uh, which we have uh, uh, attained from the archaeological is excavations. Similarities between Sanskrit and European languages, especially with Latin and Greek was first in noticed by Filippo Sassetti, Sassetti who lived in Goa between this particular 1583 to 1588 during the Portuguese time. There are similarities between Sanskrit and European languages which are Latin and Greek. Sir William Jones and many other scholars were also in service of East India Company elaborated the similarities of European and Indian languages. On the basis of this similarity, some scholars postulated that the ancestors of, of Indians were Europeans, must at one time had lived in the same region and spoken the same language. The scholars call this Indo-European language and their common homeland as the Indo-European homeland. This created a great divergence of opinion about the problem of identifying the original homeland of Aryans, which was still a matter of debate. Where they came from? What is the original homeland of Aryans? A number of homelands, a number of homelands have been propounded such as steppe of Central Asia, Southern Russia, Southern Europe, Germany, Chinese Turkestan or even Mediterranean area like Palestine, Israel, almost everywhere Vedic uh, language and literature were found except India. Rig Veda is the oldest surviving records of Aryans, it does not give an evidence of any migration of Aryans from any other area. Max Muller assigned a period of 1200 to 1000 BC. Max Muller as a true Christian believed Bible and according to Bible the world was created on the 23rd of October 4004 BC and thus Max Muller had a challenge to accommodate the entire human history within 6000 years. So because of which uh, sometimes Max Muller's timelines were not contested. The Aryans were originally inhabitants of India 
and did not come from outside as there is no archaeological biological evidence which suggests that. The skeletal remains found from various Harappan sites resemble the skeletons of the modern population of the same geographical area. So, we do not see the difference in the skeletons. Harappan civilization and Rigveda. After careful consideration, the evidence of Rigveda will lead to the conclusion that the reference it contains about people and their civilization may be taken to refer Harappan civilization. The discovery of bogus kai and inscription from Asian minor mentioned in Rigvedic deities about Indra, Varuna, so they are taking a oath. Rigveda existed earlier and the culture migrated from India to Asia minor. So, we consider that in India it is migrated from India. The time period of Rigveda in its final form should be placed not less than 3000 BC. So, what are the similarities between Vedic civilization and Harappan civilization? We will try to see the convergence. Geographical distribution of the sites is one important feature. Geographical features mentioned that Rigveda confirms the extinction of Vedic civilization from Afghanistan in the north, Gujarat in the south, Ganga in the east and Kabul in the west. So, geographical. Rigvedic culture was flourished in the area around Saraswati river and its tributaries. More than 80 percent of Harappan settlements are found around Saraswati. Now, the animals known to Indus people are sheep, dog, buffalo, bull, etc. The animals hunted by the Rigvedic people are antelopes, boars, buffaloes, gaur, lions and elephants. Most of them were also familiar in Indus people. The domesticated animals, the grains they had is similar. The terracotta figurines of horse found in Lothal, which was the coastal city of Indus Valley civilization. The horse was an important animal in the Vedic period. Horse bones and terracotta figurines have been found at some of the Harappan sites as well. So, yeah, because of this horse figurine which was found in Lothal, there are similarities. Some of the religious practices of the Harappan people like worshipping people tree, bull, shivalingas, yonis, worshipping the nature is still followed by many modern Hindus. Some of the terracotta figurines of women found in uh, Nashro, you still have vermilion in their hair parting, vermilion the tilak which uh, Indian women wear, the tilak which Indian women wear. A terracotta tablet from Harappa depicts the scene of Mahisha sacrifice, reminding us Mahisha Shura Mardini, Ramya Kapardini, Mahisha Shura Mardini. We are talking about Kali. Aigiri Nandi ni Nandi Tamedi ni Vishwa Vinodi ni Nandi Sute Mahishashu Ramadhi ni right. The Harappan people were aware of using ornaments like earrings, necklaces, bracelets, anklets, garlands, jewels. The same can be seen in Vedic civilization. Rigveda mentions of gold and ayas, ayas, copper, loha ayas. Ayas was also used in making vessels. These are the different similarities between Harappan civilization and Vedic civilization. So, we can say Aryans did not come to India from outside unlike uh, those people Europeans or some of the Indian thinkers also who believed Aryans are from outside. So, as I said Vedic civilization can be divided into early Vedic period and later Vedic period. In later Vedic period, a different branches of Vedic literature had grown. Four Vedas were followed by Brahmanas, Aranyakas, Upanishads. Brahmanas explain detailed various Vedic sacrificial ceremonies, hymns. Aranyakas contain philosophical and mystical content. They are also, these are talking about uh, a study in isolation in ashrama system with the Guru. Aranya, Aranya means forest. They are closing portions of Brahmanas. The last phase of the Vedic literature Upanishads were deducted from the tradition of 
Aranyaka Upanishad means come sit near me. The teacher will teach the student to those who sit near him through the oral road, through the dictation. Rigveda deals karma kanda, ritualistic and philosophical aspects. The Brahmanas contains ritualistic aspect. Upanishad context, philosophical context. And uh, Chandogya and Brihadaranyaka were two oldest and most important forms of Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad and Brihadaranyaka, one of the important Upanishad when you talk about and Vanaranyaka. Other important like Katha Upanishad, Katha, not Katha Upanishad, Isha Upanishad, Mundaka Upanishad, Prashna Upanishad, these are the Upanishads, Upanishad means uh, these are normally the interactions between the teacher and the student. So most of the time student will be asking a question to the teacher and teacher will be telling the moral lessons in the form of stories. So mostly it is of full philosophy. Geographical and new political states. The main settlement of Rigvedic people were around Indus and Saraswati Valley. However, during the later Vedic period, as I said later Vedic period, Samhitas, Brahmanas mentions that they are whole of northern India, mainly into Ganges. Ganga river, later Vedic period, people came down to Ganges now. Ganga river by the time occupied by proud place of the most rivered and sacred river in India. Therefore, the center of the civilization now shifted to Ganga, Saraswati to Ganga. There is a remarkable development in gradual expansion of consolidation of this fish. Jana, known in Rigvedic period like Bharatas, Purush, Tritsas, Turvasas were slowly merging with one another and disappeared the scene. People of Anas, Drishyas, Trivasas and Kirvis were also banished. Names like Koshala, Kasi, Videha, Magadha and Anga developed. Remember Magadha in the eastern Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. So the areas of South India are not clearly mentioned. Most of the time we get a information about eastern Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, these regions. So struggle for superintendence over all the republics or monarchies is the major agenda. So they were trying for universal empire. Satapata Brahmana mentioned the expansion of people towards the east. It mentioned Videg Madhav migrated from the land of Vedic culture Saraswati Valley and crossed Sadhanira Gandak river and the eastern boundary of Kosala and came to the land of Videha. So the migration towards the eastern part. The growth of three kingdoms namely Kosala, Kasi, Videha took place. Thereafter excavations at Hastinapur, the present day Delhi, Atranjikera and many other sites have revealed cultures ranging this particular 2000 BC onwards. Some of the characteristics of the pottery which we spoke about OCP and during 1200 to 600 BC black, red were, painted grey were etc were no see, noticed. Black were, red were, painted grey were OCP. So I'll be explaining about the evolution of pottery also in the upcoming class. NBP, Northern Black Polished Wear came into manufacture from 7th century BC. So NBP is another one. So these are all we discussed before. Now we see NBP. The Kuru and Panchala region mentioned in Upanishads as the seat of culture and prosperity, which are now Western and Central Uttar Pradesh. Three kingdom, kingdoms, Koshala, Kasi and Videha, are the seeds of Vedic culture. Magadha and Anga are also mentioned as the distant lands in Atharvana Veda. In South Vidarbha, now Vidarbha is the place where more farmers see suicides happen, most dry region in Maharashtra. The states of Bahlikas, Kesins, Kekayas and Kamboja were situated in farther west of Punjab. So later Vedic period. If you see the polity and administration, with the growing concept of states, kingship came normal form of government. Kingship was becoming the status of divine origin. Even in Ashoka is called as Devanam Priya, which means beloved by beloved person by the gods. 
terms like Adiraj, Rajadiraj, Samrat, Ekrat were used. But according to Article 18 of Indian Constitution, all the titles are banned now. Most of them refers to King of Kings. The term Ekrat defined in Atharvanayada Veda refers to the paramount Samrat Ekrat. Special ceremonies were organized for the appointment of kings such as Vajpaya, Rajashuya, Ashwamedha. So these are the different ejnas performed by these particular kings. Monarchy was established on the firm foundations. It was absolute but limited in several ways. It was absolute but there is a power of limitation. In modern day, the power of limiting this is constitution. Certainly. Democratic elements were operating within the framework of kinship. Example, people have right to choose their king. The conditions imposed by king's rights and duties. King dependence on the council of ministers. Assemblies of people such as Sabha, Samiti and there is a absolute check, there is a check on the powers of the king. So there is balance of power. There are checks and balances. The king under no circumstances be considered as the sole owner of the kingdom or the absolute owner or absolute power over the objects and subjects. The king was holding the kingdom as a trust or trustee. He was supposed to be trustee and hold the condition that he would promote people's well-being and progress. Progress material as well as spiritual. <coughs> as we spoke about Sabha and Samiti. Sabha and Samiti. Sabha and Samiti played important role in administration along with the ministers and officials like the, like the present secretariat by the present uh, legislature. Sabha functioned as parliament for disposal of public business. The chief of the Sabha was called Sabhapati and the keepers are called Sabhapala and the members are called Sabeya, Sabsat or Sabasina. Rules were framed to govern the debate of in Sabha, rules of business of Lok Sabha, rules of business of Raj Sabha, rules of business of assemblies as decided by the chair normally. Sabha also acted as a court of justice as it is said that one who attends the Sabha sits as a law court to dispense dharma or justice. So there are no separation of powers like Montesquieu, modern state. Samiti. Samiti was larger general assembly of people and it was different than Sabha in function, mostly political in nature. Due to increase in complexity of the society, political structure, some new officials were also appointed in the later Vedic period. Example, Sutta, Charitir, right? Sutta Putra, you must have heard Karna, Charitir, Sangrahitri, Treasurer, Bhagadhuga, Collector of Taxes, as I said, Bhaga, Bali and Bhaga, Bhagadhuga, Collector of Taxes, Gramini, Head of villages, Stapati, Chief Chest, Takshan, Carpenter, Shatri, Chamberlain, etc. More new officials came into picture, more civil servants, more royal servants rather. The administrative machinery was highly organized and became efficient instrument for ruling over large kingdom. Legal institutions became more focused. The king administered justice and wielded the rod of punishment. He became more powerful in that particular period. Petty officials were uh, petty crimes, petty offenses were left to village judges, gramini or panchayat normally. The punishments for crime were severe, right? Mutilation, likewise, death punishments were more often given. For evidence, the eyewitness was more important than informer. The law was also very clear on the question of inheritance of property, ownership of land, etc. Father's property was inherited by son alone. If the daughter is the only one, no other children, no male child, then she will get it. <coughs> the society, the Vedic society. Varnas became birth based, as I said, they became rigid in the earlier Vedic period. This was not the scenario. Development of new provision gave the question of jatis, but jati system was not yet rigid as it became during the period of sutras. Rigveda describes Vishwamitra as Rishi, but Aitraya Brahmana mentions him as Kshatriya. 
So most of the people know about Vishwamitra. He is a Kshatriya. Then he became Rishi. The fourth Varna, Shudra were deprived of all legal rights like performing sacrifices, learning the sacred texts and even holding the landed property. These are becoming the servants of the other three Varnas. The concept of untouchability had not acquired its ugly form even in the later Vedic period. The individuals such as Kavasha, Vatsa and Satyakama Jabala were born in non-Brahmin Jatis but came to be known as great Brahmans. So, rigidity is there but not that much discrimination and humiliation but it is rigid when compared to early Vedic period. Don't compare it to the present period or medieval times. This was the period of development of vast and varied Vedic culture. Upanishad became, became diversified and these are the highest level of intelligence. Education began with Upanayana ceremony. Dvija, the moment he, he was given Upanaya, he will become Dvija, twice born normally, the second birth, which means you are born to your mother, but after education you will have a different life. So we consider it as Dvija. We, it is like graduation ceremony, you can, you can consider. Right? Graduation, when you get into education, what do you do nowadays? Saraswati Puja, like, likewise. The aim of learning was to get success in both worldly as well as spiritual life. So, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. So, the focus is not on the physical world or only on spiritual world, but both. It was necessary to learn faith, retention of knowledge, posterity, wealth, longevity and immortality. All these are important. The duties of peoples were well defined and there were stages of studies. Ashrama system was there. The people were taught in homes of the teachers where they lived as a family members and participated in household services, normal Guru Seva. For an advanced study, there are academies and circles of philosophical discussions, discussions and debates. Educated householder may carry on their quest for knowledge by mutual discussions and regularly visiting the distinguished sages and learned scholars. Dialectics, normally we call it as dialectics. The great motivation of learning came from the assemblies of learned man, normally organized and invited by the kings. That is where we also learn about Buddhist councils later. Parishad were established by different Janapad kings support. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad described that King Janak of Videha organized a conference of learned people. The major participants of the conference were Ejnavaikya, Uddalaka Aruni, Sakalya, Gargi. See Gargi. Gender parity is also there. Ejnavaikya defeated all the participants in the discussions were declared most learned and wise. Gargi and Maitri were learned women. Their status shows that women were allowed to take active part in intellectual quest. Education is not deprived. Socially, they are not deprived. Opportunities were not deprived for them. During the period of Kshatriyas began to participate in the intellectual pursuit. Most of the scholars like Janaka, like uh, Pravahana Jaivali, Ashwapati Kaikeya of Kasi and Panchala. These are all in the quest of intelligence. So that is where scholars were given uh, quote by these people. Buddha, like Chandragupta Maurya, everyone encourages this intellectual quest. These scholars acquired a distinction of learned Brahmins and uh, came to them for further instructions. It is mentioned that Ejnavalkya, after completing his education with Uddalaka Aruni, went to Janaka to study philosophy and other subjects. The Chandogya Upanishad described some subjects as a study of Vedas, namely mathematics, mineralogy, logic, ethics, military science, astronomy, science dealing with poisons, fine arts, crafts, music, medical sciences. Education is wide, diverse. <coughs> So, Aparavidya, education, Aparavidya, classified different subjects. 
Mundaka Upanishad termed Paravidya was used for highest knowledge, which he is talking about knowledge of Atman, involved knowledge, life, death, etc. So, Paravidya, Aparavidya. Paravidya for spiritual conquest and uh, similarly Aparavidya for material conquest. Both are intellectual conquests, right? So, coming back to economic life. Atharvana Veda dealt with the economic aspect. It described many prayers to bring economic prosperity to farmers, shepherds, merchants, etc. This explained flowing, sowing, rains, increased cattle wealth, exorcism against bees, wild animals, and robbers. Exorcism, the belief system. The plow was known as Sira and the furrow Sita. Cow dung Sita. You must have learnt about Rama and Sita. Go check back what Sita means. Furrow. Cow dung was used as manure organic farming. It is mentioned that 6, 8 and sometimes even 24 oxen were used to pull a plow. Plowing. Many types of grains were grown by now. Rice, barley, beans, sesame, their seasons are also mentioned. Barley is sown in winter, rabi ripened in summer. Rice is sown in karif and ripen, reaped in autumn and so on. So, you can see the same barley, barley, wheat, rice, pulses, coarse grains, all this can be seen here. Satapata Brahmana mentions various operations of agriculture such as plowing, sowing, reaping, threshing. This also discussed about drought and excess rains, how it threatened agriculture. That is the reason why they used to pray to Varuna, they used to pray to Maruti, they used to pray to Indra. Indra normally the destroyer of cities. Atharvana Veda mentioned the hymns to worship cow and the death penalty were prescribed for cow killing. Govada is a sin. Money lending was also in trend normally practiced by rich merchants. Weights and measure systems were also known. Nishka and Satamana were the units of currency. Like we have rupee, dollar, Nishka and Satamana were the currencies. Market was based on bargaining and barter system was there in place. <coughs> Aitreya Brahmana speaks of inexhaustible sea and the sea of encircling the earth. It shows that sea bone trade were also known to them. They went abroad. Bali was used as a voluntary gift to the chief. Later it became regular tax. It was collected to maintain political and administrative structures. Bali became compulsory payment. Bhaga becomes the voluntary payment later. During this period, noticeable development of industry and occupations can be seen. There were many professionals coming into picture, fishermen, fire and rangers, washermen, barbers, butchers, elephant keepers, footmen, messengers, makers of jewels, baskets, ropes, dice, chariots, bows, melters, smiths, potters. All these came into picture. These professions, with these professions came different products. With the different products, there is a trade. One metal which is identified as ayas, copper, ayas. Loha ayas is copper, Krishna ayas is iron. Iron came into picture apart from gold, silver, lead, tin. These are also mentioned. Sham ayas is important. Loha ayas is copper. Iron used for making weapons, objects like nail parers, hammers, clamps, plowshares. Copper was used for making missiles. Right? So, because of the strength of the iron, so these people attained strength. That is called advancement in te technology. Silver, Rajat and gold were used for making ornaments, dishes, etc. So, that is about metallurgy, industry, trade, economy. Religion, philosophy again. Brahmanas recorded growth of ritualism and ceremonial religion. So, it became more ceremonial, more ritual oriented life. During the Vedic period, large scale ceremonies were required, maximum seven priests and two chief priests. But in later Vedic period, the large scale ceremonies required 17 priests. 
Several rites and ceremonies were common in practice for attaining success in the world, either in physical or spiritual. The idea of penance and meditation took the precedence. Men took to ascetic practices to gain heaven, but to develop mystic, extraordinary and superhuman faculties, also superhuman mental faculties. Tapas. During the later Vedic period, religious worship of Rigvedic period was replaced by elaborated rites and ceremonies and ascetic practices on one hand. As we see, there is elaboration of rites and there is elaboration of these particular rituals. Whereas the other intellectual pursuit of the people continued with the conviction of salvation was attainable only through true knowledge. Dharmartha Kama Moksha. With the true knowledge, you will get Moksha, right? The salvation. Upanishad contains philosophical treaties. There are all about 200 Upanishads. As we spoke, Brihan, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, Isha Upanishad, Prashna Upanishad, that many we saw. These are the two oldest Upanishads. This contains bold speculations about eternal problems of human thought concerning God, man, soul, universe, etc. Upanishads are considered as important contribution towards world stock of knowledge even now. Then we talk about science and technology in this particular Vedic period. Vedas, Brahmanas, Upanishads give enough idea about sciences of this period. It is the same document again we are talking about. Ganita for mathematics and which includes arithmetic, Anika Ganita, Anka Ganita, Geometry, Rekha Ganita, Algebra, Bija Ganita, Astronomy and Astrology, Jyotisha. These were the subjects which are the source of science and technology. The making squares equal in area to triangles, circles, calculate the sum and differences of squares besides cubes, cube roots, square roots and other roots were also known, under roots were also known and used. The zero was known to Rigvedic period and was frequently used in calculations to record large numbers. Astronomy was well developed. They were aware of the movement of heavenly bodies and able to calculate about their positions at different times. They had prepared accurate calendars also. They, they focused on lunar eclipses also. The Vedic period knew that the earth moves on its axis and around the sun. Further, moon moves around the earth. They also tried to calculate the time period take of revolution and distances among heavenly bodies from the sun. Most of the calculations are similar to the present times. So that was about Vedic civilization. So this is where we are ending up. Vedic civilization. Vedic civilization, we spoke about early Vedic period and later Vedic period. So I hope you enjoyed this Vakatan series. This is useful for quick revision. So this is useful for especially preliminary examinations. You should be able to do marathons for preliminary examinations, Vakatans, marathons. These how you complete the vast syllabus which is there for your examination. All right. Thank you very much. I will continue with another short step after this. Thank you.